Are you guys ready for more Chinese chef knives? Because I am. And today, we're going to be taking a look at this Dawa Chinese Chef Knife. If you haven't already, please consider supporting the channel by hitting that like and subscribe button. Now, quick disclaimer, Dawa did send me this knife completely free of charge. However, they're not paying me for this video, and they understand that all of my reviews and feedback are 100% honest. Now, as always, this is a first impression video. We'll come back here in six months to see how this baby holds up. For those of you guys who have been following for a while, you know we are no stranger to the Dawa brand. So you guys can skip for 30 seconds while I introduce Dawa to the newcomers. If you guys have not heard of Dawa before, Dawa is a forge based out of Vietnam and they make all of their knives out of upcycled spring steel and pipeline steel. So they have two different lines, which is the spring steel line and then a pipeline version of the knives. And the pipeline version is said to have better edge retention and take a better edge in comparison to the spring steel line. And in addition to that, many websites list these Dawa knives as quote unquote project knives. And over the past year, they have made a lot of improvement and came a long way. So it's kind of difficult for me to keep calling these project knives, but let's go ahead and take a look and see how these knives have improved. So first, let's go ahead and go over the specs of this knife. This knife is 215 millimeters long and 94 millimeters tall. And right here at the heel of the knife, the spine thickness is about two millimeters, 2.07 millimeters to be exact. And right behind the edge, the thickness is about 0.25 millimeters. This knife is made out of the upcycled spring steel, and all this leads down to a hidden tan construction with a wooden Y handle. Now, we'll talk about this Y handle a little bit more in a second. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the fit and finish. First thing we need to do is check for blade straightness. The knife is nice and straight, nice and centered into the handle. We'll talk about the grain here in a second. But yeah, the knife is nice and straight. The handle is fitted on there nice and tight. There are very little to no epoxy and glue runoff marks. The finish on the knife itself. The finish is a Kurochi finish, which is a blacksmith finish. And it's pretty consistent all the way through. There are some slight grind unevenness as you guys can see right here. And there is also this little brown spot right here, closer to the edge. It's not rust, just looks like some discoloration of the knife. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what that is. If you guys have any idea what that little black spot is, I'll get a different angle and get a close up of it to see if you guys can identify what that is. I know there are a lot of very knowledgeable guys that follow the channel, so you guys can take a look and let me know what you guys think that is. The thing you guys will notice on the finish is that part of the Kurochi finish actually got rubbed off right here, right, right by the troil area right here. So that is one part of the finish that I have to point out is that part of the Kurochi finish already rubbed off a bit. And I've heard people saying that the Kurochi finish starts coming off after some use and a lot of people actually decide to just sand it off and turn it into kind of a Nishiji finish. But uh, that's totally up to you on what you decide to do with it. But that's something I want to point out for you. The handle is sanded nice and smooth. And it has actually a very decent polish on this thing. Like the woodwork on the Dowel knives is actually not bad. Especially now that they have switched over to this solid one piece construction with, I think this is an ox horn end cap, maybe, or maybe it's just a darker wood. But either way, this one piece construction is really nice. And yeah, they do a decent job putting a wood finish on this. No hard edges, it's all smooth. Yeah, it's not bad. And also, I actually really like their interpretation of this octagonal handle. It is an octagonal handle, but it is more on the rectangular side. And this rectangular shape is a little bit more flat and a little bit more tall. And it just gives you a little bit more to grab onto. It just feels like you have a little bit more control over it. So I really like this style handle. They did a really good job on this. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the grind and profile. Now I have been working on improving the grind of the knife for the past year and I gotta tell you this new grind in comparison to the very first Dowel knife that I got 
looks a lot nicer. The new grind is a lot more gradual, a lot more even, and a lot thinner in comparison to the very first knife that I got from Dawa where the first knife has some inconsistency all throughout the grind and it is also thick in certain spots. They have actually fixed a lot of that. They actually brought a new grinder to help grind these new profiles. And I gotta tell you, they are looking a lot nicer, like I said, in comparison to the ones that I got about a year ago. Now the only feedback I have on the grinds is that there are still some work to do, especially towards the front end, because even before, I've noticed that the front end of the knives have a little bit more inconsistency on the grind in comparison to the choil. The choil always look decent, especially if you look through the choil, look down the choil on these new grinds, they look fantastic. But when you look down on the tip end, that's where you will notice some of the inconsistency because right now, the right side of the knife is a full flat grind, nice and gradual, but on the right side, there's some extra material and it is a lot more convex on the left side. So there is some inconsistency and unevenness towards the tip of the knife. So that's my feedback on it or my initial impression on it. Next, let's take a look at the profile of this knife. I actually like the profile of this knife quite a bit because it is very traditional Chinese. It has quite a bit of a flat spot with a very, very slight belly. So there's some rocking movement you can do, but the flat profile will allow for very good chop and push cuts. And in general, I really, really like the look of this knife. Just because it looks a lot like a Japanese made Chinese chef knife. Now, if you guys know anything about Japanese knives, you guys know the Japanese made Chinese chef knives are pretty expensive because of the amount of material there's in there. You can't even touch one of those things under $200. But of course, if you just like the style of it, I think this will be a good compromise for it. But it wouldn't be fair to compare this knife against one of those because it is made with Japanese steel. It's Japanese craftsmanship, and it's just comparing apples and oranges. It's like comparing a Japanese knife to a German knife, right? It's just, it's just, I don't know. It's, I just don't feel like that's a very fair comparison because I've heard a lot of people talk about how a lot of knife snobs just talk a lot of trash about these Dawa knives, and I gotta tell you, I've handled quite a few knives, as you guys can see, and... I just don't see the beef that they have against Dawa knives. They perform decent. They're not the best knife in the world by any stretch, but they are definitely not the worst. I've definitely had a lot worse and paid a lot more for it. So, yeah, anyway, I digress from that. Uh, we're going off topic here. Let's go ahead and grab a few ingredients and let's see how this knife performs. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and do a standing paper test which I really like. And with this new grind, the edge of the knife definitely feels a lot cleaner and sharper in comparison to what they have before. So I'm hoping I'm right about it. I mean, it didn't pass that standing cut test all the way, but let's try regular paper, see how that performs. It's definitely a sharp edge, as you guys can see here. Definitely sharp. Didn't pass the standing paper cut test all the way, but it's not terrible. I think maybe we can clean this up a little bit on a high grit because the edge is definitely there. 
but maybe just cleaning it up a little bit will help it perform a bit better. So today we don't have a tomato. We're not going to do the tomato test. We're just going to jump straight in and just cut some ingredients. So the first thing we have here is some celery. The knife is nice and balanced. It's not overly heavy. That's what I've noticed about this knife is that it's not heavy at all. So it's really nice and light in the hands. So it's, it's pretty nice. whatsoever so far we'll have to see with the carrot test but so far performing pretty well just got the carrot cut right through it don't really feel any wedging That's fine. That's fine. Doing well so far. Food's not sticking really bad on the knife. No wedging. chopping through and pushing through very cleanly. All right, as you guys can see, the knife performed fairly decent. Unfortunately, it did not pass the standing paper cut test. I think it can probably benefit from a high grit touch up with a finish on a leather strop. And I think with that, it'll pass the standing paper cut test with no issues. But outside of the paper cut test, cut through the rest of the ingredients with no issues. There's no wedging, anything like that. It didn't smash the food, it, food, it didn't crush the food. It just cut through fairly cleanly. And uh, like I said, I really like the weight distribution on the knife. It's not overly heavy, but the weight distribution is just really nice. It's very forward heavy, which is really nice for a Chinese chef knife. Um, anyway, enough is said. This wraps up our first impression video of the Dawa Chinese chef knife. And I hope you guys like the video. If you guys do like the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. It'll help me support all of this madness. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.